Um, the first attempt was made by William and Caroline Herschel. And this was a very simple method. They just looked in different directions and counted the stars, right? And this is a pretty straightforward method. If you were, you know, dropped on a hillside in the country at night, you might look out at distant lights and try to use those lights to figure out where the towns were, right? And so the basic idea applies to the galaxy as well. And what they um, did in 1785 was to look in different directions in the sky and just catalog the numbers of stars in each direction. And what they found was that the system of stars that they plotted out once they, you know, cataloged them uh, was flat like a wheel. And the sun, they assumed, was near the center of that system. So um, this is a very different picture, right? This doesn't look like a spiral galaxy at all. Um, so what do you think is just various things that could go wrong with this idea of star counting? And can you connect some of those things that could go wrong with the mapping towns analogy? So basically I'm saying, what were the mistakes that, that the star counting uh, method you know, is prone to? And then how does that connect to our analogy of standing on a hilltop and trying to map the nearby towns by, by looking at their lights? So go ahead and type into the chat. Yeah, definitely. So lots of different potential issues. Um, maybe some of the lights are blocked by buildings or trees. Uh, maybe some of the stars that you're, you're seeing are actually galaxies. Maybe you're double counting. Um, maybe you're only seeing the, the largest and brightest towns or stars. Um, all right, some of the stars might be too faint for, um, especially in the 1780s for them to have detected. Yep, you can only see a certain sample that's probably nearby to your location. Yep, and there could be lots of lots of things that are um, interfering with whether we actually see a town in a, a given direction. Trees, hills, light pollution, et cetera. All right, so um, those are some of the things that I came up with. I think you came up with more than I did. So you might, um, you might be wrong about the distance of the towns. If you wanted to guess the distance, that might be tough to do because towns with brighter lights might appear nearer than they actually are. Um, you might miss out on things if they're being blocked. And so all these different ideas that you came up with, um, those were some of the uh, fundamental errors with the star counting procedure. And um, it's worth remembering that people used to think that our Milky Way galaxy was the entire universe. So in this picture, this was the only galaxy. This was everything that there was. And so we, we lived at this point in a very small place, right? Um, one of the big problems is that the idea of the hills or the trees being in the way of the towns, right? And that was the, the dust that the Herschels could not see through to see all of the stars in the galactic disk. Um, when we actually wanna map the full extent of the Milky Way, it might help, you know, if we, if we don't have the ability to use a radio telescope to peek through the dust, one of the first things that we might do instead is look in a direction with less dust. Well, we can't really do that in the disk of the Milky Way, it's full of dust, but the halo is less dusty. And so the next thing that was done in order to map the Milky Way was to use RR Lyrae stars. This is another type of variable star similar to Cepheids. Um, and these have a constant luminosity. And so therefore, if you measure their apparent brightness, then because they have a constant luminosity, then you can measure their distance quite easily. All right, so globular clusters, not only do they contain Cepheid variable stars, but they also contain RR Lyrae stars. They're out here in the halo. And so measuring the distance to all of those globular clusters can give you the entire extent of our galaxy's halo. All right, so the first person who did this was Harlow Shapley in 1917. Um, he mapped the direction and the distance of different globular clusters in the halo using those variable stars. And he found that the globular system was spherical. It was 30 kiloparsecs across and that it was not centered on the sun. And so when we look at the, um, the results from the Herschels, they are here, right? So they said the sun is at the center of the flat disk system. They were right that the system was a flat disk, but they were wrong that the sun was at the center. Instead, the center ended up much farther away from the location of the sun. 
based on um, Shapley's, you know, finding of the system of spherical globular clusters.